Emotional eating is something that many of our clients will identify with here at the clinic. So whether it's out of boredom or frustration, anxiety, depression, any number of feelings, we see that oftentimes people get caught up in a pattern of trying to use food as a coping skill to address those emotions. And the first thing that we need to do before even getting to how to figure out how to cope with those feelings better um, is that we need to be making sure that we are eating appropriately. We're eating what we need and we're getting our physiological needs met because emotional eating in the context of restriction or dieting is not emotional eating. It is hunger. It is your appetite trying to find any way or any crack in your executive functioning in your brain to tell you to get something to eat. So before really sinking yourself into doing any work around principle eight and coping with your feelings, you really, really have to make sure you're in a really strong and good practice of getting your needs met consistently, having worked through the other principles so that we can understand and after hunger and satiety is met, what is kind of left over that your brain still seems to be straying towards food as a way to cope with emotions. So let's dive in. Food is actually a really effective and uh, easy coping skill for us to use to deal with feelings. So it's really economical, it's pretty widely available, and it's really diverse in the different types of experiences it can give us, right? Not only just like smells, textures, etc., but also the memories that we tie into food, the cultural relevance that some foods have. So it's really an easy way to comfort ourselves and feel better. The other thing I wanna say about food as a coping strategy is comparatively to some other maladaptive coping strategies that some people can develop, it's actually a pretty low risk. Um, you know, if you think about higher risk coping skills like uh, drug and alcohol use, high risk behaviors with like vehicles or, you know, operating motor, <laughs> motorcycles and things like that um, at high speeds, uh, compulsive spending, uh, becoming an MMA fighter and dealing with your feelings that way. There are a lot of other high risk behaviors that can lead to much more acute consequences as opposed to food for comfort. And there certainly can be a case made for the long-term effect of uh, health and, and how uh, using food emotionally will affect that. Um, but again, I think as a clinician, considering the risks and benefits to each one, I, I would rather see some of my clients utilizing this as a coping skill as opposed to some of the, some of the other high-risk ones. Ultimately, if you do turn to food as a coping strategy, I do hope this material helps you, but what I wanna say is that the goal is not necessarily to eliminate it entirely. Food is naturally and normally pretty much always going to be involved in coping in some way, shape, or form. So it's not that we want to eliminate it, it's that we want to put it in its rightful place. We want to use it in the places where it can appropriately help us manage or um, intensify our, our feelings, ideally our positive ones. Um, and we want to really start to understand that it can't be the solution to all of our feelings and unmet needs. And so that's what we're going to walk through for the rest of the video. Intuitive eating uh, in the book, they actually put emotional eating on a spectrum that I think can be super, super helpful to start really thinking about this in a more in-depth way. So um, on the first end of the spectrum, we have what they call sensory gratification. So eating food because it is fun, you like the texture, it's pop rocks and it's like crazy in your mouth, or it is a really, really hot day and ice cream just feels really, really good on your tongue in your mouth. So sensory gratification has to do with the pleasure that we derive from the act of eating itself and that particular food. And then moving up uh, on the spectrum from that, we have comfort eating. And I think we all have some version of what comfort eating looks like for us. Um, as I said, it can be like that ice cream on a hot summery day. It can be, you know, as they say in the book, like curling up uh, at a fireplace with uh, some hot cocoa and like a nice snack. It can be having chicken soup or other particular foods that really kind of help you feel nurtured if you're feeling sick or unwell um, and other types of foods that um, you know seem to go really well with the occasion or the the moment that you're in that has to do with um, using food to enhance the experience of comfort for that particular moment 
Once we move a little bit past that, we start talking about food as distraction. So utilizing food as distraction looks like either consciously or subconsciously being aware of some feelings that are coming up and diverting the mind over to snacking and it can often feel very like unplanned or sometimes i'll say reactive it really feels like you're not in control of the thought it's kind of just happening um, and distracted eating to kind of get you out of addressing the feelings that are bubbling or brewing can start to snowball into a pattern of running away from your feelings. And if this continues without those feelings being addressed, we're gonna find ourselves sliding further down the emotional eating spectrum. So the place that comes after distracted eating um, is sedation, right? So eating to sedate yourself. And this is a style of uh, emotional eating that creates a physiological state in which someone can no longer experience emotions. They literally numb themselves by creating a physiological experience with food that is more overwhelming to deal with. And so it allows the feelings to be, again, suppressed or stuffed and it can sometimes also lead to practical changes in someone's day that again kind of lead to the relief of not having to do with the feelings right someone feels so unwell from the emotional eating that they might miss work the next day or they cancel plans or aren't seeing people that they otherwise would see they're kind of protecting themselves from having to deal with the emotional state and then finally um after a longer term pattern of eating for sedation, we sometimes see a progression to what we would define as punishment. So eating for punishment. And that really becomes a place where the style of eating is painful um, and hard on somebody. And that is a place where a lot of self-hatred um, and low self-esteem can develop and the act of eating literally becomes a punishment for how someone feels about themselves. And that can feel like a very, very hard place to get out of. And at the bottom of all of that is a long, long brewing set of feelings and unmet needs that have gone unaddressed. And so at that point, we really have to talk about helping um, that person uh, get professional help so that they can start to take this apart and work through the feelings that they need to work through to get out of that emotional eating place. So as you can see, as we're talking about this, eating can solve uh, some level of emotional feelings or an emotional state, but it is not the tool that is gonna address a lot of our feelings and unmet needs. And the more we try to not deal with those things and hammer at food as the, the, the way to resolve it, and then the more food doesn't work, the further we get down that spectrum and on and on it goes. So this is the, the way to start to understand where you might be at on the emotional coping scale or just understanding the scale in general um, so that you can start to identify you know, what might be helpful in, in your own practice, in your own life. Okay, finally, we are gonna talk uh, some hard and fast tips to help you start initiating on how to actually navigate the emotional spectrum of uh, eating for coping. So, I am gonna say this again. Number one, meet your, emotion, your, your nutritional needs. Get your nutritional needs met. Eat the food that your body needs to eat to feel physiologically satisfied and full and content, okay? That is number one. Uh, number two, the next place we want to go is leveling up your awareness of the contexts, situations, environments where you start to see that these urges to use eating as a coping skill start to pop up, right? So really looking at your day, looking at your week, looking at your overall routines. Are there particular places that you are when these feelings arise? Are there particular people around? Is it when you're alone? Um, is it a particular time of day? You have to really start to see if there's maybe a pattern here that you can start to address or at the very minimum start to get more sensitive to the earlier signals that this is going to maybe start to happen or that you might um, kind of be on a trajectory towards using emotional eating to cope with a feeling that is probably not going to be answered by the food right 
So once you have these different types of situations or contexts in your life addressed, what you wanna start doing is assigning some feelings. You really wanna explore for these particular times, what are the feelings coming up? And in our clinic, we literally use feeling lists. They are very easy to find and download on the internet for free. Um, you wanna look at some of these feelings lists. If you're not used to naming feelings beyond you know happy, sad, mad, bored, frustrated, it might be helpful to really kind of broaden in your vocabulary there and dig a little bit deeper. So that's the next piece. We want to define the emotional state to some of these situations that arise. And as you can probably guess, uh, from there, we want to start understanding that there are unmet needs that go along with these emotional states. Um, the first one that's probably the easiest to identify is boredom, right? So unmet needs around boredom have to do with um, creativity and novelty and productivity, looking for something new, something fresh. So if you find yourself coping with boredom by eating emotionally, that's where you want to start to develop a skill set of other things that you can turn to to address that need better than food can. So from there, um, we also might consider anxiety, right? So anxiety is a place that a lot of times we might use food to cope emotionally and anxiety sometimes has to do with unmet needs for safety and security. So exploring what would help you feel safe and held and secure in that moment. Um, and you know, sadness, depression, sometimes those can have to do with unmet needs for connection, right? So thinking about ways, whether it's with people you know, or maybe people that you don't know, finding ways to connect on things that you enjoy or feelings that you're feeling um, and finding some kind of community somewhere to help you deal with those un unmet needs and, and feelings that might be coming up around sadness. So I want to acknowledge this is a gross simplification of what can possibly happening, uh, be happening for someone here. I just wanted to offer some examples to kind of get you thinking. I want to fully say that I know that some feelings cannot be resolved, right? Something like grief is something that stays with us forever um, and it may take different shapes over time. Um, but when those feelings do come up, um, we have to recognize that even if we can't resolve it, food is maybe not the vehicle that's going to help soothe it in the most effective way. And so there might be other ways to deal with that feeling when it comes up. And the last tip um, that kind of ties all this together is that we really want to be building out a bigger self-care toolbox, right? We want to be um, developing a wider set of nurturing practices towards ourselves to help deal with our emotions more effectively. And there's lots and lots of examples for this. Um, it certainly could be connecting with someone that you know and love and want to see more. It can have to do with getting out of the house if you feel like you're really stuck in technology or if you're feeling really closed in by your space in your area. It could be creating a safe space to cry if you're really feeling that you need to get that out. So that could be with music or movie or film, um, TV, finding those places where it feels like uh, an appropriate spot to let those feelings out. Um, if you have feelings around aggression or anger or injustice, you might wanna look for ways to get that out. And that could be um, with a punching bag or a high intensity type of um, routine or exercise or learning a skill set around utilizing um, those types of techniques. Um, you want to really start to be more open and curious about how do we better meet our own needs um, so that we aren't always turning to food, which isn't necessarily gonna um, help us beyond that, that initial moment of, of feeling suppression so that, we, so that we don't have to deal with it. So. This was just an overview. I think it was a little bit long, so I am sorry. Um, I hope it helps you understand a little bit more about how we cope with food and some of the ways to navigate it a little bit better. Um, would love to hear your experience down below, um, and I will see you for the next principle.